Now comes the real magic. You can take it home. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Player One Star. Today we're going to finish up my restoration on my Apple IIc. Before we get started, word on the street is, all the cool kids remember to click on that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when I make future posts. Now that we got that out of the way, in my previous video, I started restoring my Apple IIc. I had a problem with the drive and it wouldn't always load the disc. After taking the drive apart and looming up the drive rails, replacing the belt, and doing a whole bunch of maintenance to it, it did work. But eventually it would always stop working. So since then I've been looking for a long-term solution to make my Apple IIc work every time. Researching a more permanent solution led me to a website called Big Mess o Wires. It turns out they sell a floppy disk emulator that will work with a variety of Apple products, so I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and get one so that I can test it on my Apple IIc and see if it will work better. I also bought a couple of optional items with it, so let's go ahead and take a look at what all I got. So the other day I got this package in the mail. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what came inside. First it came with an acrylic case that you can piece together. It came with the cable necessary to hook it up to your Apple II. It also came with an adapter to make this an internal or an external drive. I ordered mine with an 8GB micro SD card because it also comes preloaded with firmware and some example discs. And here is the floppy EMU board itself. It has a screen on the front along with the SD card receptacle and buttons to navigate through menus. On the back you will see the board version and other information. And I did go ahead and look through the quick start guide, although there wasn't much I had to do to prep this item because the SD card already had everything loaded onto it that I needed. However, if you didn't order the card from them, then you will need to consult these directions to prep your memory card. I went ahead and plugged the cable into the board, and now I'm going to plug it into the motherboard. Now let's plug in the power and test this out. As soon as you turn on the machine, the board should boot and give you a menu. You can navigate around through the menus by clicking the buttons that are there. Next and previous are self-explanatory, and select will bring you into the next menu, or if you click the three dots, it'll bring you back a menu. Everything you see on here was preloaded when I got my card, although I already have most of the software on disk. I'm going to go ahead and select a program to test. Once I select my disk, I have to power off the machine and then power it back on so it will load. And wow, this is amazing. My Apple II actually boots and is reliable in loading the software. I have to tell you, after dealing with that floppy drive not working for quite a while, this is a huge moment of exhilaration for me. And I'm glad I chose a game that takes me right back to my childhood, as this is a game I really enjoyed playing. Let's go ahead and test this game out a little bit and make sure it can continually load from disk. This game is basically a business simulation in which you run a lemonade stand. You have to choose your materials, your supplies, how much you want to advertise, how much you're going to charge per lemonade, and you have to take into account the weather so that you can successfully run your business. This was in the days before SimCity, so having a simulation game this involved was actually quite something. And it looks like I still remember how to play this game as I turn quite a profit. I also loaded ProDOS on here so I can copy over my disks from the external drive onto the memory card. Once I got that done, I went ahead and started to tidy up the case a little bit. I used a zip tie to tie up the excess of this ribbon cable, and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep it this way because I did find out that I can possibly use this drive on my Macintosh LC2, which also quit working due to a bad hard drive. But this will work for now. I then started putting the case back together. Once I got all the edges snapped in, I was able to shove the cord back into the slot where the floppy disk drive was. It was stubborn, it didn't want to go in there, but it eventually made it in there. After the lengthy process of getting all the screws back in there, I decided to turn my attention to the floppy emulator case. Putting this thing together is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, but then I realized that once I put all this together, it doesn't really seem like there's an easy way of getting to the SD card slot. So after a while, I just gave up on it and decided to leave it set out for the moment. If I was going to leave this permanently in my Apple IIc, I would have no problem putting that case together, but since I have some other experiments I want to do with it, I'm going to go ahead and leave it out for now. I'm also not going to junk my Apple IIc's disk drive, as it does kind of work, and I do want to take a stab at fully restoring it someday. All right, but now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and try some of the games. I'm going to go through the menus here and choose a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. 
This now includes my entire software library that I own for the Apple II. I got most of the software from a teacher that was retiring and gave me his old Macintosh LC2, which was his teacher computer at one point in time. And just like when I normally insert a disc, I have to power off the computer and power it back on for it to load. Games take the same amount of time to load from the floppy emulator as it would from a regular floppy disk, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead through some of the loading time here. Here's another nostalgic game from my childhood, this is Word Munchers. The point of this game is you are giving some words that you have to match up with. Using the frog, nicknamed the Muncher, you have to go around and munch all of the words that match the criteria on the top of the screen. You lose a life for each word you munch that does not match the criteria, and you also use a life if you run into a Troggle, which is a monster that loves to eat the munchers. I remember playing this game at school when I was in fourth grade. They had a Macintosh in the room, and it was backwards compatible with all the old Apple II software. Moving on to a different game disc, this is Wheel of Fortune. This was another game I really liked playing back in the day, especially when I didn't have anyone to play with because I can just play against the computer. This was also one of the rare games that I remember having a lengthy soundtrack. The Apple IIc only has a simple beeper speaker, so the fact that it can create this song is actually very impressive. Believe it or not, this is some of the best sounding music I've ever heard come out of an Apple IIc. But anyway, playing through the game is exactly like playing through the game show. Or I guess I should say the game show of the 1980s. You have to make it through three rounds and be the top scorer out of those three rounds to move on to the bonus round. I just went ahead and played through the first round here, and I ended up getting the puzzle correct. Although I wasn't quite sure how to spell interior, which is the last word of this puzzle. Luckily, I guessed it right. The sound it makes when it reveals the letters, though, is something to be desired. Back in the day, this is the way I was used to playing the Apple IIc. My grandpa had the monitor that went with it, and it was the same exact monitor. It's a 9-inch screen, but it's monochrome. However, the Apple IIc is also capable of color when you plug it into a color monitor or a television. So I don't have the color monitor, but I will plug it into my TV and check it out. The first thing I noticed is that the text of this game actually looks pretty sharp. I'll show you in a little bit what the text usually looks like when it's on a TV screen. And the music actually sounds a little bit better too. I'm capturing this over a composite input, and I'm capturing the audio from the headphone jack. Considering this machine's hardware is based on the original 1977 design of the Apple II, the amount of color they have on this screen is very impressive. I couldn't even dare to imagine what this would look like on an Atari 2600 of the same time period. Next we'll move on to another favorite game of mine, and this is where you can see that the text looks rainbow colored and distorted, and the loading text is barely readable. However, on a monochrome screen, the text actually looks very sharp. The text looks distorted on a color monitor based on the way the Apple II produces color. And that method does not look good when you have small text that needs a lot of detail. However, when showing a large screen of graphics like this title screen here, it looks very good. I am by no means an expert on how the Apple II actually produces color, but if you're more interested about this, I'll leave a link to a video from the 8-bit guy in the description who explains this a lot better than I ever could. But anyway, this is one of my favorite puzzle games from the 1980s, and I'm actually more used to playing this particular game on DOS machines. The DOS version runs faster, but does not look as appealing, so I guess I prefer the graphics of the Apple version better, but I like the speed of the MS-DOS version better. And here's Ms. Pac-Man. I do like this game on this machine, and the graphics look fairly good for the time, but the sound effects in this game will drive you insane. I actually prefer to mute this game as I'm playing it. And last we'll take a look at Lemonade Stand again, because this game has graphics and text. And the graphics don't look too bad on the color screen, however the text, again, has that rainbow streaking pattern, and is kind of hard to read. So while I prefer the color for the graphics, I actually don't like it for the text. So I think I'll end up sticking to playing this game on my monochrome monitor as I can read the text better. So wow, that is a fantastic result. I am actually very pleased with the outcome of this project, a lot more so than having to take apart that drive every two or three weeks. 
Believe it or not, this video actually took me about four months to complete. But due to the magic of YouTube, you're actually seeing this back to back, so it doesn't look like it took me that long to get this project completed. I will say most of the gap between when I was restoring the drive to when I installed the emulator was waiting on the item to be shipped. This item, I believe, was shipped from the UK, so it took a few weeks for it to come in. Overall, although I'm not really to the point where I'm actually going to give a review on this product, I think it was very well worth it for this purpose. I'm actually looking forward to using this device to emulate a hard drive for a Macintosh LC2. My LC2 used to work, but through one of my moves, it actually stopped working. I'm assuming the hard drive went. And it's been a while since I've actually tried to use the floppy disk drive on it, and that's not really working too well either. So until I give that a try, I'm actually going to reserve my thoughts on it, except for, for this project, for the Apple IIc, it works great. And I am looking forward to using this device a lot more. The Apple IIc was my first computer that I ever touched. The original Apple IIc that I played on was actually owned by my grandma and grandpa. My parents didn't even get a computer until 1996. So there was a gap of a few years between me using this computer and me having a computer I had constant access to. Now that this project is actually complete, it's given me a little bit more time to work on my 8-Bit War series. And that's right, the next video I have coming out will be on the Atari 7800. This is the last console I'm going to look at before we have all three consoles, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Sega Master System, and the Atari 7800, face off to see which one was better. If that's a video series that you guys think you'd be interested in, go ahead and check out my channel. I already have some of those videos posted, and by the time you're watching this, it may already be completed. But that said, guys, that's about going to wrap it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button, share with a friend. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see some of the content I've already done, feel free to click on some of the suggestions that are popping up on your screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.